Okay, it's half past six. Um, I would like to welcome you all to today's presentation about the international language Edo. Um, my name is Patrice Leiteritz. I will be your host today. We have a short presentation. We have half an hour time. First of all, I'd like um, I'd like to hear something or read something from you to see if the, the chat works. Um, if you could write me a little word, hello, your location, your name. Ah, all right, I see the first one, Saluto, hello. Um, yeah, the topic today is the international language Edo and the goal of uh, our presentation today is to show you how to create your first conversation. This is actually um, uh, a presentation I have already held, but last time it was in spring 2021. Also Expolingua, uh, I, I held the talk in, in German. Today it will be English because um, some of the attendants last time wished it was English back then. And today I, I want to make it a little more international and therefore it will be English. Um, yes, you, you are cordially invited to ask questions, but it would be best if you save it uh, for the for uh, for the last minutes, so I can time to so I can can take them some time to uh, answer them. Uh, just write in the, in the chat when you're ready, and I will get back to it. Yes, I'm uh, I am a member of the German Edo Society. This is, um, you can say, the Edo Club in, in Germany. And I will uh, tell you a little bit at the end of the presentation too. Okay, let's start with the presentation. Um, I would like to start with a question for those of you who don't know, what even is Edo? Edo is a planned language developed from Esperanto. Edo, the word Edo literally means descendant. It was published in 1907 and it is based on natural language languages. For example, uh, German, uh, French, Russian, English. Uh, it is uh, relatively easy to learn. We have 100% uh, regular grammar and we only have 26 letters, no special characters or diacritical signs, like for example, in Esperanto. All right. Um, the introduction will contain some tables and um, a little much text. Uh, I will, I want to show it to you regardless because it is uh, still important uh, to see at the beginning, uh, for example, the pronunciation. Most of the consonants are pronounced as they are in English. You can see uh, um, them at the top here. But for the other ones, there is a special kind of pronunciation. And I have some examples here in Edo and in English. The letter C is always pronounced like S in bits, never as K or S. So the Edo word citrono, which means lemon, is always pronounced. This is, it is the basic rule for all letters. They are always pronounced the same, no matter in which context they appear. Um, the G is always hard as in get, never like in gin. So it is gardeno, garden. 
the age is always sound uh, so, uh, sorry the age is always sounded and never silent honoro honor um the j is voiced like s in pleasure or it is more or less the french pronunciation i believe so it is journalo for journal the r is always pronounced too usually rolled if you don't roll it it's not bad but it, most people pronounce it as portar carry the s is similar to english classo for class and the uh, the x is pretty much like in german x. so it is xylophono um, I, I actually looked up the pronunciation of the English word, but I think it is xylophone. The Y is um, just like in yellow, always. So it is yaro for year. And the uh, CH is like in chat. So chefo for leader. Okay, those were the consonants. Uh, let us have a look at the vowels. You have the A as in a father. So the Edo word is patro, also father. The E is uh, pronounced as in then or pet, metro, meter. The I, uh, like in machine, irar, go or to go. The O is pronounced as in glory, pordo, door. The U uh, would always be pronounced like in root, to you. We also have uh, diphthongs. The A U is pronounced like in German, uh, like au. And the E U is special. You say it as a long E in pet and a short U. Consecutive vowels are pronounced separately always, like the word for air, aero. Okay, now we've got the pronunciation. Let us take a look at the basic rules. I cannot, of course, I cannot uh, explain all basic rules there are, um, but this is still a special part because you can actually, in Ido, you can actually uh, see what kind of word you are looking at by looking at the ending. So nouns always end with O, like the word domo for house. And verbs, um, the ending depends on the tense. So infinitive is vidar, to see while present is me vidas, for example, I see. Or the past, me vidis, I saw. The future is me vidos, I will see. And you can also say me vidus, I would see. Last of uh, those is the imperative, vides, look. Adverbs, which are based on Adjectives end with E, um, like Bele, beautiful. Um, adjectives end with A. This is not on the sheet here, but this is always a rule. All right. Um, lastly, uh, let us check the personal pronouns in Ido. I've put together a table. And there are some um, special rules I want to show you. We have um, the singular personal pronouns. The first per person for the English word I is me. Um, the second person you have actually, like in German, two different uh, versions, informal and formal. Um, the informal is two. And the formal is vu, uh, which is both you in, in uh, English. And the, uh, the 
third person, you have the distinction between male, female, neutral, which is ilu, elu, and olu. In some cases, you can uh, drop the last u. It depends on um, what, which kind of word comes after it. So you have ilu for he, elu for she, and olu for it. In plural, it is uh, similar. First person for we is ni. Second person, uh, it's the same informal formal. There is no distinction, vi. And um, third person, ili, eli, oli. Now you can see in the third person, there's actually another column here. And this is the general form. This is very special for the language because it means you can actually um, use a genuinely gender neutral form. Um, right. And th this is the form you usually choose when uh, talking about uh, like a group of people, uh, a group of uh, people with different genders, you always use Li. If you have a group which only consists of male members, you can use Ili. But uh, if you use Ili, you, um, you want always to show that they are male. But in mixed cases, always Li. If you uh, want to use a possessive, possessive pronoun, you simply add an A. So Mea is my, um, Lia is there. Okay, this was relatively uh, complicated for, for the start. I understand this, but now we want to get closer to our actually goal of our talk today. Um, we want to have our first conversation. So you see two people, Bianca and Adam. They will be the two people who, uh, who have this conversation. But first, I want to show you the actually steps towards a full conversation. OK, every conversation starts with a greeting. So you can, for example, use saluto, greetings. Basically, this is the most um, basic greeting there is in Edo. You can always use it. But if you want to say a little bit more, you can also say Bona Martino, Bona Giorno, Bona Vespero, which means good morning, good day, or good evening. If someone visits you, you can welcome him. him or they, and you just say bon vino, which is welcome. All right, you have the greeting down. Now, how do you get going? Um, typical question would be, how are you? Quality standards. And if you're a German like me, you take it literally. And <laughs> you, could, you could just say uh, bonne, Good and oh well, and be done with it. But uh, well, if you take it literally, you can say a little bit more, like "Bonne, equale standards tu, well, and you," or "Me dankas tre bonne, thanks very well." You can also say "Ne bonne, me is a smalada, not well, I am sick." If you are not feeling well. And you can also say, of course, uh, me esas kelke fatigita. I'm a little tired. So, okay. Now you're in the middle of the conversation already. If you're not alone, uh, you can, or you should introduce uh, whoever is with you. Um, to do this, you can simply say, to esas mea patro uh, or matro for your father and or mother, fratulo e fratino, brother, brother and sister, or amico, which would be your friend. 
Um, important here is, as you can see, Fratulo and Fratino has the same base, but a different suffix before the ending O for a noun. So this is a male, UL is a male um, suffix, and EN is a female, indicating female. So amico is not a male friend. It, it can be a friend of both genders. You can also say a male friend by saying amiculo, or a female friend, amikino. So this is both possible with Ido. Um, if more people uh, are with you, you can, of course, also say to is as mea genitori for your par parents, gefrati for your siblings, or amiki friends. Um, right, exactly. The same rules apply for amiki, uh, like or as for amiko. You can also um, put the suffixes in front of the O. Okay, you have introduced your friends or whoever is with you. In some contexts, um, maybe asking for the age is possible or useful. And to say that, to ask someone um, how old is someone else, here is someone uh, female, Quante L. Evas, how old is she? And to that, you can answer El Evas Okiari, she is eight years old. El Evas Dek e Unyari, she is 11 years old. Or a comparison, El Esas Tam Olda Kam Tua Fratulo, she is as old as your brother. First thing that you see here is the uh, a glimpse of the uh, um, the number system of Edo, which is also pretty simple. Um, the basic uh, numbers are very simple, like OK for eight. And the um, higher numbers are constructed logically, like DEC E UN. DEC is 10, E is AND, and UN is 1. So 10 and 1 is 11. You can also see the word evas. Um, if you learn Edo, the word esas will be everywhere. It is to be. So um, I am tired, me esas fatig fatigita, for example. But evas indicates age. Evo is the age. So you always use evas in these um, questions or answers. But if you compare uh, the age of someone to someone else, you use ESAs. That's important. All right, then um, you want to talk about what you are doing. This is important for you at the, um, during the day. So the question is, Quon tu volas agar odia? What do you want to do today? Um, and I have some examples. The possibilities are limitless, but I have put together some. For example, me visitos mea genitori. I will visitos. I will visit my parents. Uh, Nivolas climar sur monto. We want to climb a mountain. This is not the mountain. This is not a specific specific mountain is just a mountain. Uh, or, for example, me iros a la lago Hodie. I will go to the lake today. So this is a special lake. This is uh, not just a lake, but the lake, for example. So this is uh, another difference. And here uh, you also has, uh, have the uh, um, future form, iros, I will go. Okay, so after you are basically done, you are saying goodbye. So first, simple word like adio or ciao, 
which is like adios or ciao in, uh, in, in Spanish or Italian. You can say it like in German, till rivido, see you again, or English also. Um, or if you want to say more, you can say me desires agreable giorno or seman fino, which means I wish you a nice day or a nice weekend. Um, interesting here, seman fino is a compound from semano, which is week, and fino, which is the end. But you can drop the first O from semano because it is a compound. So the uh, last O actually suffices. But you don't have to. You can also say semano fino, just as you as you wish. Okay, now we have all um, steps for the conversation which we need. And um, I have put together a basic conversation from these um, uh, steps. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I will read um, the whole page to you and then I will uh, translate it into English for you. All right, um, A is Adam, B is uh, Bianca. It starts with Saluto Bianca. Buona giorno Adam. Quale tu standas? Me dankas tre bone. E quale standas tu? Anche bone. Ma me esas kelke fatigita. Qua esas tua amichino? Tu esas mea juniora fratino Clara. Which means, um, greetings Bianca. Uh, good day, Adam. How are you? Um, thank you. Very good. Uh, how are uh, and how are you? Also good. Uh, also well. <laughs> but I am a little bit tired. Who is your friend, female friend? Um, this is Mia Young, um, <laughs> my younger. Uh, sister, Clara. It's a little bit um, complicated because I translated into German and then into English in my head. Okay. First part of the conversation. Now, second part. Um, it goes like this. Buona giorno, Clara. Quante el evas? Elu nun evas kinyari. La vetero esas bonega. Me iros ala lago. Quon vi volas agar hodie? Ni volas promena en la parco. Me desiras bona tempo. Adio, Bianca e Clara. Ciao, Adam. Which means, guten Tag, Clara. <laughs> Good day, Clara. Um, and towards Bianca, um, how old is she? She is now five years old. The weather is great. I will go to the lake. What are you, what do you want to do today? Um, we want to take a walk in the park. Um, I wish you a great time. Um, by Bianca e Clara. Ciao, Adam. Okay, this is it. You have seen the conversation. You can have your own conversation, Nido. Um, this was basically the the short presentation. And as I can see, we have <laughs> five minutes left. It's uh, it's uh, going very quickly. Um, Thank you. I will. Uh, I want to use the last minutes to have a few words about our um, German Edo Club, the German Edo Society. We have a website, um, World Wide Web. Edolingo.de. It's a German website. We have a contact form there. You can reach us. 
our society exists since 1960 and we have currently 47 members. And we try to keep contact with EDU speakers all over the world. And if you uh, want to find out more, you need help to find more inf information about the international uh, language EDU, you can reach out to us and we would like to help. On the last uh, slide, I have actually noch uh, <laughs> a few useful links for you. Um, we have the Ido Saluto. This, this is our society's magazine. Um, you can Google the name Ido Saluto. Uh, I am actually the one who uh, does the layout. Um, it, there are about four uh, editions each year. So you can um, check this out. We have also uh, Wikipedia in Ido um, with a lot of people working on it. And there um, is also an Ido library with many books in Ido. Um, WorldWideWeb.edovivo.info. And the German Ido Society also has a channel. OK. I'm done. Thank you very much for your attention. I see um, the chat. There are a few questions, maybe. Um, yeah, again, thank you very much. Um, I saw the emoticons. <laughs> thank you. Um, OK, um, if you have questions, you can ask them now, and I will try to answer them. OK, what are the benefits of learning Edo? This was actually also a question we had in the German uh, presentation. The most uh, important aspect is you can you can um, learn Edo to make it easier to learn another language. This is actually in the, maybe not the, the most important feature, but it is. Uh, there are studies which say it is much easier to learn Edo and then French, for example, because many roots of the words are actually taken from many other languages. For example, Cavallo, which is horse, doesn't work with German, which is Pferd, but um, French or Spanish, I think. Anyway, this is a great help. Edo is a great help. And also, it's relatively easy to learn. You still have to learn it. It's uh, another language. Uh, yeah. And we have an um, online community from uh, which Edo, uh, which speaks Edo, and you can exchange with them. OK. Um, OK, why am I not directly learning Italian or Spanish? Because it is a language you can actually use. Uh, well, um, I actually learned about Edo from the internet, like most other people too. And I was uh, always interested in constructed languages, which is basically the, the attempt to uh, create a new language from existing parts, in this case, from other languages, and, and make it so it is regular, easy to learn, um, and does not have any special rules. You have to learn. You have to memorize. German is not an easy language. Nobody wants to learn it. Um, sure, I could, I could use Italian if I'm going to Italy, uh, but I wasn't interested in it. And also it's harder. So my goal was to learn Edo and I'm still learning. I'm not an expert, um, but I have to say, I I could learn a lot of new words, old words. I did not have uh, Latin, for example, but um, because I learned Edo, I know much more roots than before, which helped me to understand other languages, including some Latin, and of course, uh, Latin-based languages like Italian or Spanish. All right, do we have any more questions?
apparently we don't have any more questions. Now we are, uh, it's, it's seven now. Uh, that was half an hour. Thank you again. Um, have a nice day. Have a nice Black Friday. And thank you very much again. Goodbye.